Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Ghosts that attach themselves to people always seem to have some kind of agenda. If you're lucky, the ghost acts as a sort of protective, invisible friend. But if your ghost is like most of the specters I'll be talking about in this episode, those who never leave you alone and follow you forever, then you're in for a lifetime of chills every time you go to the bathroom, close the kitchen cabinet, or walk down to the basement to do laundry. People who have their own ghosts can never lead a normal life. Not only do they spend every waking moment looking over their shoulders for the next scare, but it must be impossible to let someone into their life, be it a friend or a lover. How do you casually explain the presence of the old man in your bathtub or the shadow that lingers in the closet every time you invite someone over to your house? I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Welcome, Weirdos! This is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Coming up in this episode, have you gone your entire life without seeing a ghost, ghoul, or specter? Are you jealous of your friends who have woken up to something standing over them in bed? You might change your mind after you hear about some real-life people who have suffered lifelong hauntings. If you're new here, welcome to the show. While you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, my newsletter, to connect with me on social media. Plus, you can visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression or dark thoughts. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. Listen in to these stories about people who grew up dealing with something spooky attached to them that followed them throughout their lives. Hopefully, they will help you to begin to understand the intense mental anguish that these individuals are under at all times of the day and night. Amanda writes into the website Your Ghost Stories to share about the dark presence that has followed her throughout her life. Here is her story. Ever since I was a child, I've always felt dark and something bad around me. When I was sleeping on the top bunk in my room, I saw a shadow figure fill the doorway and I couldn't look into the closet. I'd pray, either as I felt it at the time, I never saw it but sensed it. Now, years later, it has come and gone in my life. I would get this gut-wrenching fear in my stomach before. It always happened the same way. I'd sense it walk up to me and lean in inches from my face. One time in my apartment, it happened and I couldn't open my eyes. Then I was home alone in the same apartment and at the edge of the bed I'd hear, are you going to wake up or what? I would get up and the feeling would fade. A few years later, I was in my car at a bridge contemplating taking my life. When I looked over in the passenger seat, an exact twin of me, except with green eyes, she was as solid as you or I am. She just stared at me, and I really thought she was going to touch me, but she never moved. She radiated this dark, mean energy and said, what are you going to do about it? I had a hard time looking at her, and I couldn't talk. 
She eventually disappeared and the energy was gone. Now, fast forward to this weekend. I was sick with a virus and in my bed sleeping. My husband had just left the room and I heard glasses lightly clinking together. My daughter likes to look at my essential oils. I remember thinking, why did my husband leave her in there? But I fell asleep. Right after that, I sensed someone walking up to my side of the bed. I was going to open my eyes when the feeling of fear grabbed me again. I felt it lean over to my face. I put my arm over my head and opened my eyes expecting my daughter to be there. She wasn't. I think it attacks me mentally. I get images of hurting someone or seeing them suffering. I would never hurt anyone like in the images it showed me. It actually did this before, years ago. It showed me hurting my son. I snapped and took pills. I fear this is going to happen again, and even though it never physically hurt or threatened me, I'm scared. No, terrified. I pray hard, saying, please protect me from bad and evil. Please don't let me see, hear, or dream of anything bad every night. It comes around once a year, usually. And what do I do? Has anyone experienced this? A man from Australia describes a lifetime of paranormal activity that not only got him in trouble with his parents, but that also seems to have ruined one of his relationships, saying, For me, this started when I was a kid, living not too far from Melbourne, Australia. As a kid, many strange things happened to me and my family. Of course, being from an extremely skeptical family, just about everything was passed off as being our imaginations or just given simple explanations, such as shadows and the like. For me, the three most memorable incidents that occurred were, one, the time when I saw a white cat walking up our hall past our lounge room. We'd never had a white cat, nor could ever find traces of one. The cat will reappear later. Two, whilst playing in the backyard, I heard my mother call me inside. As I approached, I could see the shadow of a man walk across the kitchen through the window. Of course, a few seconds later, when I got inside, there was no one there, and my mother had been out the front the whole time and never called me. 3. Just before we moved to the country, I was punished for destroying my room, including splattering black ink or paint dots all over the walls and ceiling. I'd not been near the room for many hours and had no idea how or what had happened. But let's face it, who believes an 8-year-old when this sort of thing happens? So that's the background of my life. There are, of course, many other things, such as doors opening and closing on their own, no matter where we were and the likes. Jump the clock forward about 15 years, and I'm now happily engaged with a girl who claims to be partially psychic and have psychic friends. She can sense things around me. Yes, doors are mysteriously opening and closing all these years later, and invites a couple of friends around to see what they can sense. Being curious but skeptical, I go along with it when they tell me that I am being followed by three spirits or beings. Two are children who give them, in their words, the heebie-jeebies, and a third, more sinister one. For me, life went on. The odd, strange thing happens along the way. Remember the white cat? I still swear my mother hit a white cat in her car a couple of years ago, but we never could find anything, and no more thought about it until today. It had been nearly 18 years since I broke up with my fiancé, yet today, at work, a very nice lady whom I had never met before and claims to be able to see spirits, within 15 minutes of meeting me, turned around and told us all that I was being followed by the spirits of two children who were giving her the creeps. Yes, she actually said the heebie-jeebies. I was shocked and taken aback is I have never before spoken to anyone about this. So now I have to wonder, who are they? What do they want? And what is their connection to me? I'm still skeptical, in part, but now have to recognize there must be something there. I don't want to upset them talking about this, as they've never done anything untoward to me. 
There have been many times in my life when something bad has been happening. I've inexplicably suddenly found myself feeling calmed and almost comforted. Was this perhaps them? All I know is today I believe what I have been told and really would like to know more. Who are these children following me? Most importantly, why are they following me? Redditor Zach1392 has had a lifelong hate-hate relationship with a brood of ghosts following him from home to home under the leadership of an, quote, oppressive demonic ringleader, unquote, writing, So this is going to be long. I apologize in advance. I guess it would be best to start at the beginning. When I was born, my parents rented a small house until I was roughly two years old. The only memorable thing mentioned to me was my mother hearing an elderly woman soothing me when I was sick, and when she walked into the room, everything that had been left out was put away. They believe they caught her on a picture, but I would have to dig around and find it next time I'm there. Anyway, we then moved into a house that my great aunt had found for us. This was around 93 or 94. I remember being terrified of being alone anywhere in the house. I remember waking up to voices, having very vivid dreams, and seeing shadows. The scariest moment was when I woke up and looked at my window to see what looked like a shadow trying to get in. Now you're thinking, so what? Someone tried to break in. Nothing paranormal about that. True, except my room was on the third floor, and the only thing outside my window was a long fall to the ground. For the record, this entity was not the old woman. This thing was, is different. After that incident, I slept in my parents' room for a few years. I was terrified. Looking back at some of the pictures, you can see odd shadows here and there. We've also had cats our entire lives, and each cat would become very protective of me. My parents figured it was just cat behavior to look after the weakest family member, but it happened until I was much older. When I was 13, we finally moved out of that house into a newly built house. We were and still are the first occupants. The first night there, I heard walking in my room, followed by a loud bang that terrified me. I went to my parents and told them that whatever was at the old house followed us here. They dismissed it as the house settling. But I knew better. Over the years, things were relatively quiet. I ended up joining a paranormal group and honed in on my sensing abilities since I had originally shut them off as a child. Upon meeting the members, one of them looked at me and asked if she could talk to me in private. She then accurately described my old house, where my room was, the color and layout of the room, and my experiences. Now, I had yet to tell anyone about these experiences, so I was taken aback a bit. She said she couldn't fully get a look at what it is, but whatever it is, it's still with me. This reinforced my idea that it didn't want to be found out. To this day, every time I try to focus in on it, I get a nasty headache and the feeling of being blocked. After a few years of investigating places, we obviously had things attached to us. The good, bad, and demonic. The demonic things really took a toll on all of us, but mostly my wonderful future wife. But those are stories for another time. What I want to mention is that whenever they were around me, I got the sense that the thing from my childhood was a lot stronger than them and became the ringleader. I felt like he, it, would give the orders and sit back and watch. Getting back on track about the house, some of the memorable occurrences there have happened to only me. I woke up to my dog whining, which meant she wanted me to put her on the bed. I told her to just go ahead and jump, because I am not getting up. I felt something get on the bed, and as soon as I felt it, my dog went crazy. She started barking and growling, and my cat, named Kitty, 
original, I know, started hissing. I assumed that meant Kitty was on the bed and they were just fighting since she hated the dog. It was at that moment that I realized the barking and growling were coming from the door and not the bed. I finally looked and saw both animals staring at whatever was on the end of the bed. When I turned to look, I just saw a black blog. I could faintly make out eyes and that it was moving its head. I was so tired that I just said, look, I'm exhausted from work and not putting up with this. Go away. It left, and that was that. Another day, my mother came home and asked why I messed with her headbands. Now, she had a wall thing where she put her headbands. I walked in, and they were all sticking straight out. Another time, I was in the shower and heard the front door open and someone walk in. I assumed it was my father, since it was around the time he normally comes home. I got out and heard what sounded like him whistling. No big deal, until I looked outside and saw that my car was the only one in the driveway. As soon as I noticed this, the whistling stopped. I immediately grabbed two knives and checked every room in the house as I was certain someone broke in. I found nothing, and as soon as I put the knives down, the whistling started again. At that point, I bolted and called my dad and said, look, either it's a ghost or someone broke in, so good luck. Since I worked night shift, I would come home around 4 or 5 in the morning. I've walked in and heard someone say, hey. I would respond and get nothing. I've seen a woman in the kitchen who looked like my great aunt. My mother was sick and sleeping downstairs, and when I walked in, a voice whispered, shh, she's sleeping. I've had the front door yanked out of my hand. I've even seen the deadbolt turn by itself. I've walked in on conversations only to hear, shh, he's here, be quiet. Now, those things I can deal with, but whatever followed me from the creepy house pretty much stays in one room. Everyone I have ever brought over has said that the room feels heavy and off. Even my parents don't like being in there for more than a few minutes. I have figured out that if you knock before entering, the atmosphere seems lighter. I've since moved out, and the first thing I said before leaving was, you are not allowed to follow me, I don't care if you stay here, but you are not going with me. Interestingly enough, my parents don't experience anything, at least not that they will openly admit. They hear the occasional bump and walking every now and then that we know as Kitty. She passed roughly two years ago. We had her for roughly 20 years, but she was already around two when we got her. I'm sure I'm leaving things out, but we'll edit if I remember. If you want to hear about my investigations and demonic issues, feel free to ask. I'll post more. Thanks for listening. Hopefully, he will post more. More true stories of people who have been haunted and tormented by ghosts their entire lives when Weird Darkness returns. The political season is upon us, and those flying the red colors have their promises. The politicians wearing blue have different promises, but those of us in the cryptid party have only one promise – to stay hidden and mind our own business. Don't let the political pundits, the candidates, the PACs, or your close-minded brainwashed family and friends tell you who to vote for. You're smarter than that. That's why I'm telling you who to vote for. This November, pull the lever for Bigfoot and Mothman. Our new president, Bigfoot, won't make the same mistakes as humans have, because he's not human. Bigfoot loves our country and you, so much so that he knows you have a better idea of how to run your life than he does, so he's staying out of your life. With Vice President Mothman, their new administration will do what no administration has done in the past – absolutely nothing. Show your support for the Cryptid Party by grabbing your Bigfoot Mothman 2024 merchandise with campaign buttons and stickers, hats, 
shirts, tote bags, mugs, hoodies, giant tapestries, pillows, magnets, even clothes for your kids to get them into the spirit of the political season. This year, vote for someone you can trust in, believe in, even without scientific proof of their existence. A vote for Bigfoot and Mothman is a vote you can be proud to tell others about. Get your Bigfoot and Mothman 2024 merchandise now at WeirdDarkness.com slash shirts. Available in all sizes and colors, even red and blue if you want to confuse people about your party loyalties. The new Bigfoot and Mothman 2024 political campaign merchandise at WeirdDarkness.com slash shirts. One of the most frustrating things about true ghost stories is that the people who live through them rarely get any answers when it comes to their haunting. Kelly, a woman who has moved around quite a bit, has been followed by the spirit of a young girl since she was 15. Here's her story, Little Girl, Protector, Ghost. My story starts in 1986 when a boyfriend of mine was attacked one night in my bedroom. I was downstairs while he was asleep in my room. I went upstairs to go to bed and he was sitting up on the bed with such a look of fright. Mind you, this was a forty-something-year-old man. He looked at me and asked me if I was evil. Shocked, I said, what the hell are you talking about? He then went on to describe a little blonde girl about seven to ten in a long white gown and pixie hair and looked sort of like me. He said she jumped on him while he lay asleep pushing on his chest, he was fighting with her and managed to get her off of him, and as he lay there tripping, he looked to his side and she was laying there staring at him. Thus began my journey with this little girl. While his life continued, I often felt the presence of something, pictures flying off the wall, being touched. Once I had these wind chimes in a living room window and they just started moving with great force. The window was closed, so there was no wind. I moved to another house, and that's when the little girl started showing herself to my oldest son. He would tell me, Mom, I saw a little girl in my room. She would float to the beds of my other sleeping children and float out the door, staring at him. Ryan was so scared. I have never seen her to this day. My youngest son's dad and I were sleeping in that house, and I woke up having felt a patting on my back. I told Sam to stop it, as I thought he was patting me. I went back to sleep and felt it again. I got mad and yelled at Sam to stop it. Sam woke up and looked over at my side of the bed and freaked, jumped up and started growling. I suppose it was his way of dealing with what he was seeing. He climbed over me, putting his hands out to grab something that I could not see, all the while yelling at me in between his growls, saying, don't you see her? He later described her and said that she looked with shock at him like she was scared and she got smaller and smaller until she turned into a blue ball and disappeared. I've had night terrors since I was 15. Still do. I wonder if this little girl is something of a protector. Twelve years later, I moved to Phoenix and one day my oldest boy and I were talking about the little girl. He told me not to talk about her. He was still scared although it seemed she had been inactive for some time. I told him, Ryan, don't be afraid. You always have the white light and the Lord will protect you. He insisted, Mom, don't bring her up. So I stayed quiet, and then out of nowhere, we heard a voice like in a tunnel saying, don't be afraid of me. Well, we both tripped out big time. Now, more years later, I live up in northern Arizona, and for years, it's been quiet, with the exception of my continued night terrors. My nephew John came to visit me, and we were all sitting in the living room, eating. He went to wash his fork and came back from the kitchen, and he had this strange look on his face. He looked at me and said, Auntie, do you guys still see the little girl? I said we had not seen or heard about her for a long time. I then asked, Why, John? He said he was just asking. John used to stay the night and has always been really close to Ryan, so he knew about the girl. 
a few minutes later, still looking scared, and said, Auntie, I just saw her. She was standing in the kitchen. I saw her out of the corner of my eye, and I turned to look, and there she was, plain as day. And she twirled around for me, and then, poof, she was gone. I don't know why she has followed me. I have a few theories. Both the men I talked about earlier were not good guys. Her always looking at my kids, maybe she's a protector. I really don't know. I wish I could understand who and where she came from. It's a major mystery to me, one that I wonder if I'll ever come to know. Why does she not show herself to me, and yet she'll show herself to men or young boys only? If anyone may be able to help me with this, I would be ever so grateful. I often feel very afraid to this day, not so much because of the little girl, but of the night terrors that still plague me. A young woman from Florida feels certain that either a French ghost or possibly a demon has been following her since she was a baby. We could call this one the French peeper. A few years ago, I think I've encountered paranormal activity going on around me. The very first time I heard twigs snapping outside my window of my room, so I looked and no one was there. I didn't think it was a big deal because I knew it could have been an animal, but that's never happened before, so of course I got a little scared. But I went on with my day and everything was fine. Then, about a week later, I was again in my room and I didn't exactly hear it but I felt like someone said my name near me, but no one was there, which was weird. And I'm a total believer in ghosts, so I jumped to the conclusion that that's what it was. So I told my mom that there's a ghost in the house and it's following me, and of course she didn't believe it. So I was scared and slept in her bed with her that night. I got up around 2 or 3 a.m. to go to the bathroom in her room, and when I was coming back I barely got to her closet when we both heard like a kind of moaning sound. It sounded like a man. We thought it was each other, and I ran into her bed, and we were freaked out, and she thought it was one of my brothers and said if they were in the closet, they were going to be grounded. But no one came out the whole night. So after a while, we went to sleep. When I woke up in the morning, my mom was in the kitchen, and I was just laying there in bed. My mom has an elliptical near the side of her bed and it was folded so that it couldn't turn on. You have to run on it to turn it on. But then I heard a beep like it was on and I looked and it was light up blue and turned on and that seriously freaked me out. But I ignored it. Then sometime later, my mom told me that when me and my brother were little, she'd have the baby monitor on in his room, and she heard a French woman singing lullabies to us in French while we were sleeping. Sometimes it was more than just the woman singing in French. She said that she heard people having conversations in French also. My dad and uncle also heard it. When my parents bought the house, an old lady owned it and she was French, so I don't think it was interference that picked up conversations from cell phones or something. I don't think it was a coincidence. But after that, it went away, and never thought anything of it. Thought it just went away. But now I think it's always been here the whole time, because after that, I have been uncomfortable sleeping on my couch. I loved sleeping on my couch. And now that I think about it, I'm uncomfortable being in any room by myself when the lights are off. It just feels like someone's watching me. When I sleep on the couch, it feels like someone's standing about 10 feet away from me just watching me. It's very uncomfortable. And I could have sworn I saw someone standing literally right next to my shins when I looked down at my feet. I got so scared I couldn't breathe. But yeah, I would love to know if it's really a ghost or demon or if it's just my mind playing tricks on me. I don't think it's fake considering my mom heard it too. My boyfriend thinks it's a demon because of my sexual past, things happening at a very young age, around five or so, not rape or anything, because his sister supposedly had a demon because of her sexual past and stuff. I don't know. I've never heard of that, but yeah. 
and I've heard they feed off of negative energy. My brother has some anger problems and it's about 24-7 and we constantly fight and him and my mom and brother constantly fight too, so I don't know. Help me out, please. I just want to know what this is. Angelie has been living in the same home in Florida since she was a child, and in her account of the ghostly happenings that occur around her, shadow men, giggling children, etc., it seems like she and the ghosts had grown used to each other. Here's the story of her Florida freakout. I've lived in the house I live in now literally since I was born. It's the only place I've ever lived, and since I was a little girl I've had experiences here, but I won't talk about all of them in this story or it would be a hundred pages long. I can tell you that when Anton, my fiancé, moved into my house, the activity became much more severe. It's kind of like whatever is here was used to me, but when Anton moved in, got really territorial or something. Before he came, stuff would happen, but nothing really frightening. Mainly, I'd see shadows and stuff. My mom would hear children playing and giggling in my bedroom when I wasn't home, and my dad told me he saw boxy black shadows in the kitchen. I saw a silhouette that looked like a man in a tall hat with two women on either side of him in my living room. Didn't scare me, though. They were just having a good time, it seemed like. I think that was something residual. Probably because of growing up in a haunted house, I've always had a bit of a fascination with the paranormal. It both scares the crap out of me and fascinates me. Anton, though, wanted nothing to do with anything paranormal, and he'd get upset at me if I even tried talking about it. I think he had a bad experience before when he was a kid. Anyways, not long after we moved in, activity, which kind of comes and goes in this house, picked up with a vengeance. Banging on the walls, voices when no one else was home, stuff getting thrown, you name it. I was in the living room one time with Anton, and he was on the other side of the room from where I was standing, folding laundry, and I felt something thwack my back, and I turned around and saw a red towel on the floor behind me. My fiancé was engrossed in his computer game, and I know it wasn't him that threw it, and it was only me and him in the house at that time. We'd see weird, bluish lights, too, that had no identifiable source to them, usually in the kitchen area. Anton swears a glass candle holder got thrown at him. I saw the broken glass all over the floor, but I didn't actually see it get thrown. The scariest experience Anton and I had was one night when I went to bed before him. He'd been laying on the couch in the living room at about 1 or 2 in the morning watching TV, and I went to bed. I then woke up because I heard a very loud bang come from the wall in my room behind my bed, and when I woke up, Anton was sitting on the floor at the foot of the bed. I'm like, what was that? And why are you in here sitting on the floor? I thought you were watching your show. He goes, you heard that too? Uh, yeah. I'd have to have been deaf not to. Then he told me what happened to him out in the living room. Evidently, he'd had the lights off and was watching his favorite show and he saw something weird out of the corner of his eye. And when he looked, he saw what looked like faces coming out of the wall. Sounds overdramatic, I know, but he swore on his life he was telling the truth, and I heard one other person say they had seen that too, in my living room. An ex-friend of mine who spent the night before at my house, June. He was scared to death and ran in my bedroom, but he'd sat on the floor because he didn't want to wake me. That was when the banging on the wall started. Anton said it had gone on for ten minutes before I woke up. So I was pretty freaked out after that, but I somehow managed to fall back asleep, and Anton went to bed too. I should mention, he talks in his sleep. A lot. Normally I'll just sit there and listen to him talk and then go back to bed. He woke me up, talking, as usual. Nothing new there, but then he started to get really agitated and he kept talking and trying to tell me something, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. Suddenly, it was like something had gotten in between him and me, and it literally grabbed him and threw him. He flew out of the bed and hit the wall next to the bed and whacked his head on my nightstand. I started screaming 
and he was awake now and, understandably, pretty freaked out. My fiance is 6 foot 2 and 200 pounds. I'm only 5 foot 6 and about 140. I couldn't have thrown him like that if my life depended on it. He flew off that bed like someone had shoved him and he hit that wall with a lot of force. He actually chipped some of the plaster off the wall. Yeah, it was a terrifying night and I always sleep with the lights on now. Also, the night after that, we both heard something weird. We heard what sounded like something being dragged down the hall, only it sounded like whatever it was, it was being dragged over leaves. It was kind of a rustling, dragging sound. Only obviously there's no foliage in our hallway, so I'm going to guess that too was probably something residual. Our house isn't particularly old. It was built in the early 1970s. I think the residual part of it might be connected to the land, not the house, because those silhouettes I saw in my living room when I was a little girl, having a good time and listening to music and dancing, the music and talking is what had woken me up, were dressed in really poofy, old-fashioned dresses, and the guy had on a suit and top hat, definitely not 70s-style clothes, much older. There are a lot of theories about why my house is haunted but I think it's definitely the land, because many other people who live in my area in Florida who I know are also experiencing paranormal activity in their homes. I think I might also have or have had a poltergeist. Possibly. At least that would explain a lot, like why stuff would mainly happen when I was scared or angry. When me and my fiancé would fight, that's when he'd most likely get things thrown at him or hear me calling to him after I'd left the house and it was just him there. Recently, not a whole lot's been happening. As I said, it comes in waves. Sometimes nothing at all will happen for months or even years. I heard that in the spirit world, they don't experience time passing the way we do, so it's like something will happen every single day for a month, then nothing will happen for a year. It's very strange. Actually, my dad passed away not that long ago and I believe he's here protecting me, so that could also be why nothing scary has happened in so long. It gives me peace to know he is here, watching over me, not gone. His walking cane was out in the garage, and then last December, I went out in the living room to get something, and his cane was in there by the Christmas tree. Nobody had touched it in months. I guess Dad was letting me know he was there, celebrating the holidays with me so I don't think my house will ever not be haunted. I don't know exactly why it is or what happened there, but I feel safe with my dad watching over me. And at least my poor fiancé hasn't gotten anything else thrown at him lately. Samantha's haunting began when she was still in the womb. Here is her big dog story. I'm Samantha. I'm 23 and I believe I've been followed all my life. My mother told me of an incident which occurred while she was pregnant with me. This led me to believe all that has happened throughout my life has not merely been random coincidences. She told me that she fell asleep at my grandmother's house and left the doors and windows open as they had family over. She said she awoke to a draft that she thought was coming from the open windows and saw a dark mass, almost a shadow of what to her looked like a big dog at the foot of the bed. She said she knew she couldn't run or get away, so she closed her eyes and began praying. She and most of my family are very religious. She said she felt a heaviness on her tummy and began crying, fearing the worst for me. It then bared down on her then released her. She said out of fear she stayed lying there for maybe three minutes, then quickly went to her mother, who ended the little get-together. They prayed and cried for some hours until they fell asleep together. There has been a lot of small oddities that happened to and with me all my life, such as hearing people I know calling me when they were not present, hearing my doorknob turn when no one was at home, a constant feeling of being watched, which intensifies at a particular place. The first big occurrence was when my mother and I moved in with my dad after 14 years of living with my mother's aunt. Typically, I went to bed around 2 a.m. 
I woke up and realized I was unable to move any part of my body and I couldn't speak. I immediately began to panic, which got me nowhere, but more scared. My physical panic was subsiding as I started to cry with confusion, thinking I was going to die. I lay there for maybe a minute, then I heard my name whispered quietly close to me. I cried harder, then felt a chill run over me and then a burning on my left leg. Immediately after the burning sensation, I realized my crying was rocking my body that I could now move. I ran out my room straight to my parents in tears, wailing. When I calmed down and told my mother what happened, she said that I was too old to be scared by nightmares and that I simply scratched myself. Then she sent me back to bed. I didn't sleep properly for weeks. I'd stay awake as much as I could, then doze off out of exhaustion. School was hell because I was always tired. Eventually, I got over it, somewhat, but I still can't sleep in a completely dark room. I've always gotten nightmares, as old as I am. They're usually of people I know but with horrific faces or mutilated in some form. I know it's people I'm familiar with because of their clothes. They would say things that would make me cry or scare me in my dreams, but I could never remember what it would be. There's a lot more to tell, but I think this is a lot to read and a lot for me to share for now. I welcome any thoughts or opinions, ideas, or suggestions. People being haunted by spooks and specters for their entire lifetime isn't as rare as perhaps we'd hope, as we'll discover with even more of those stories coming up. Nothing goes better with chocolate than vanilla and nothing goes better with the darkness than vampires. So we've combined all of them into a new blend of weird dark roast coffee called Very Vampilla. This bloody good blend combines a medium dark roast coffee with hints of chocolate, vanilla, and just a tad bit of dried cherry, too. So good, you'll want to sink your fangs into the fresh roasted bag itself. Weird Dark Roast Very Vampilla, the only thing at stake – sorry, not sorry, bad pun – is your dissatisfaction with your old coffee. Sip it while the sun is down if you're one of the undead, or when the sun is up if you just feel dead and need a bit of a boost. Get your Weird Dark Roast Very Vampilla at WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. An anonymous young woman claims that she had been followed by something malevolent since she was about five years old. We'll call her story The Voice on the Tape. Her first run-in with the entity came when she recorded a radio show with her sister. After I was done, I rewound the tape and began to listen to it before going to play it for my parents. Mid-session, however, I heard a sound. It was a long, drawn-out sigh in a deep register. It sounded as though a man were standing in the background and was very annoyed with talking and expressing his frustration with it. But then, when she was in college, she experimented with recording the entity again, and things got creepy. On the tape, things are quiet until her mother leaves the room. So my mother gets up and walks down the hall and into the room where my nephew was hanging out in his crib, not trying as hard to nap as I would have liked. On the tape, you hear her leave and me say to one of the dogs, Lex, leave him, one of the other dogs, alone. Then you hear me sigh and immediately after, you hear this deep, raspy inhale like something is sucking all the air out of the room. I make no comment on it, but you can hear me flipping through the magazines. I hadn't noticed anything. From down the hall, you hear my mother talking to my nephew, trying to get him to say, I love you, so she's saying that very slowly. I love you. On the tape, you hear this very odd hissing laugh, and suddenly you hear a very, very deep man's voice say, 
very loudly and clearly, I love you. When you think about something following you, would you rather it have a recognizable form or not? One woman has been dealing with a shadowy nightmare figure for close to a decade. I'm not very good at storytelling, so bear with me. I'll start by saying this has been going on since I can remember. I've always heard or seen things, but your childhood imagination is a crazy thing, so you can't tell the difference in reality. As I've gotten older, I start to question it more. Since I was a child, I have had vivid, grotesque nightmares. I've always liked creepy things and thought the more morbid, the more beautiful, so it didn't bother me as much when I had them. Of course, there's a few nightmares I remember strongly to this day that had an impact on me. One nightmare in general was of a man trying to kidnap me from my family. I remember he wore a red hat, blue shirt, dark blue jeans, brown work boots. I've never seen his face, though. He never said anything, just stared in a distance. It was always nighttime, most of my dreams were set at night usually, and he always had his hands to his side. I remember running and crying to my mom in my dream, but feeling like I wasn't allowed to say what was wrong. The dreams were always in the back of my mind as I grew older. I believe they stopped when I was eight. Skip ahead seven years. No dreams of the man whatsoever. I was happy and really didn't think about the nightmares at all. One random night, I remember I had one. I remember the dream was set at my local park over close to the waterfall. He was standing down in the water and I was staring right at him. The weird thing about it was it was set during the daytime. All he did was stand there and watch me. I remember looking around and there was nobody at the park, not even the ducks who swam in the pond. I woke up and was so confused. I thought it was so weird I had a dream about him again. I ignored it because, honestly, I just didn't care. It was a dream and nothing can hurt you in your dreams. Or so I thought. Skip forward a few months to winter time. It was so cold in my room I couldn't handle it. I slept in my parents' room on their floor for a few nights in front of their heater until I could get my own. My dad's alarm went off at 4.30 a.m. for him to get ready for work. I woke up and decided to go back to my room because I had gotten pretty hot in front of the heater. I remember laying down facing toward my dresser that has a mirror on it. It was pretty dark in my room and I was snuggled up in my blankets. I looked in the mirror and saw a darker shadow at the edge of the bed. It just stood there, staring at me. I thought it was my dad, but I had heard him leave for work already. I watched, hoping it was just a weird shadow in my room and nothing more. I laid there for what felt like hours just watching it. I was about to fall asleep when I saw it move. It moved to the other side of my bed. I just kept staring at the mirror, too afraid to turn around. I felt the bed shift like someone was laying down. It happened so slowly and I've never felt more scared than I was at that moment. I closed my eyes out of fear and when I opened them back up, it was morning. My clock said 8 a.m. I put a blanket around me and walked to the kitchen. Mom was in there and I sat down at the table and just told her what had happened. By the end, I was crying, I was so scared. Now, my mom was kind of mean and would make fun of me if I was scared. She didn't say anything except that it was creepy. I was expecting her to laugh at me and make a joke about it. She just didn't say anything else. I ended up telling my Nana, who looks at things on a deeper level as I do. She had goosebumps and a look of terror in her eyes by the time I finished telling her. She told me that the whole situation was not good and I have a demon following me. I kind of ignored her because she was a strong Christian and I'm an atheist. A few years go by and I move out of my parents' house. The apartment I was in had a bedroom before you get to the master bedroom. I always hated walking past it at night because it was creepily dark in there. 
I would always feel terrified to look in there if I passed it and would keep my head and eyes forward. Fast forward two years, and I'm in a new apartment with my boyfriend. I remember standing at the stove one night cooking some hamburger helper and feeling a strong presence behind me. I mean, it felt like someone was right behind me breathing. I expected it to be my boyfriend, but when I turned around, no one was there. My boyfriend was in the bathroom and our two cats were in the bedroom. I thought I was losing it. I mean, I felt crazy and didn't know what to tell my boyfriend. I thought he would think I was crazy too. One day we were searching forever for one of his work shirts. He had no idea where it was and I started taking pillows off the couch and there it was, folded perfectly. My boyfriend said it was a ghost with manners. I laughed but still had no explanation whatsoever. Fast forward one last time. A year later and I'm in a nicer apartment with my boyfriend. We've had weird things happen that we both couldn't explain but this one takes the cake. I was walking downstairs while my boyfriend was working overnights in a city almost two hours away. I got downstairs and looked towards the kitchen. I saw a dark shadow standing in front of the fridge. It was the outline of a man. I turned the lights on and it instantly disappeared. I swallowed hard and decided to be brave. I walked in the kitchen, got my drink, and started back up the stairs. I was so proud of myself for just dealing with it with more confidence. I made it almost to the top step when I felt something push my chest really hard. I fell all the way to the bottom of the steps. I got up as fast as I could and ran to the kitchen and got a knife. I made my way slowly to the living room. I sat on the couch with the knife and every light downstairs on until my boyfriend came home around 7.30. He asked what was wrong and I just started crying and telling him everything. He didn't stay with that job long because of the drive and that he didn't want anything to happen to me at night if he's gone. I was glad he found a better, closer job. It's been two years and so far the only experiences I've had are just loud noises or things being misplaced. I hope I never have another encounter with that man again. Redditor Smithisab writes that he has been haunted by the same ghost throughout his life, even in the bathroom. Here's his story of the bathroom ghost. I'm fairly sure there's a ghost in my house. Ghosts make me incredibly anxious, so I don't like to think about them a lot, but I thought I might share my stories for once and ask for more from others. Basically, I live in a house built in the 80s. Not that old. No one has died here, which makes everything weirder. First weird things started happening when my parents first moved in. Remotes would disappear, along with medication and other things. Not a huge deal. Parents never thought a lot of it. Scary things started happening when I was around three, though. I was a baby when we first moved in, but just before we went on a vacation to Duluth, Minnesota, I told my mom that voices were telling me I needed to stab or kill her. My mom was scared but brushed it off. Well, all throughout the trip, I kept alerting her to when they were talking again, and I would cry. Eventually, she'd had enough and yelled at me to never talk about it again. I didn't. More things happened when I was around eight, though. At age eight, my mom worked a 3 a.m. shift at her new job, so I slept in her bed. Parents have separate beds. Dad kicks in his sleep. My room is above my parents' room and our floors are squeaky. Just before I went to bed, I distinctly heard footsteps circling my bed upstairs in a U formation, back and forth. Eventually got my dad to check my room. Nothing was there. Heard it the next night as well, but managed to get to sleep. Never happened again. I've heard a voice once as well. I was in the kitchen making a snack, heard my brother asking something from the hallway. I said, what? No one was in the hallway. He'd been in his room asleep. The biggest thing that happened was when I was around 10 or 12. Now, we have big mirrored cabinets in my bathroom. To open them, you press the corner of each mirror cabinet door, which takes force and makes noise. 
I was taking a shower one day when I heard the opening cabinet door noise. Looked out from the shower. No one was there, but the door was slowly swinging open. Freaked me out, and I got out as fast as possible. That night, I convinced my brother to sleep in my room. As we were talking around 1 a.m., something hits the other side of the wall near my head. Note, the bathroom shares a wall with my room. It sounded like a fist and then nails dragging down the wall. Screamed and cried. Brother hates ghosts, refuses to talk about it. Now, this is what happened most recently. On September 4, 2013, I had a nightmare that I was walking into the basement laundry room with my mom when she told me to stop following her because there was a ghost in the bathroom. In my dream, I went to her room and waited. She came in and said there was a ghost in there. She said he was my guardian, but if I didn't want him to be, I'd have to shout no or say, Vila, Vilas. I said for her to tell him, Vila, Vilas, because I didn't want a ghost watching me. I woke up scared out of my mind. Looked up, Vila, Vilas. Turns out it's a Polish word for a female ghost. Got even more scared as we are Polish, only a little though. I didn't want to wake my mom up, so I tried to go to bed. At 7 a.m. I heard her walking around, so even though I was exhausted, I went to tell her about my dream. Two minutes after explaining my dream, I had a great mall seizure and ended up in the hospital for the day. Nothing has happened since the seizure, and even though it's been linked to a medical condition I have, it still freaks me out that it happened the day I had that scary dream. I'm still too scared to go into the basement laundry room alone. So, anyone else have a timeline like this? How do you deal with it? Not all stories of lifelong hauntings are dark. One Redditor actually has a nice story about a friendly spirit. My whole life I've lived in a house in Kentucky that's over 200 years old. Relatives of Mary Todd Lincoln actually lived here, and I think it may be one of them. I've had a spirit with me since I was born. My mom remembers looking through the doorway to my room, watching me lie in my crib, looking at the chair in the corner, and laughing and babbling. Not only that, but she also remembers smelling perfume and hearing footsteps throughout the house. So, needless to say, I think it's a woman. I tried to get rid of it when I was about 13 years old, but it kept coming back, reassuring me that it isn't a threat to me. It communicates to me through sounds that only I can hear and can understand as words. Sometimes it sends thoughts to me, like it's telepathically communicating with me. And sometimes I feel like there's something passing through me. It's moved things, too, but not very often. I can't see it and never have been able to. But sometimes, in a dark space, I can see a shadow pass in front of small lights. Or sometimes there's a slightly darker, human-looking silhouette standing in a corner or against a wall. In lit conditions, I can sometimes see the air waving. I've approached a shadow before. It didn't move when I was moving, so it's not my shadow. It stayed still and didn't attempt to move at all. All I could tell about it is that it was about 5 feet 8 inches tall. Still not sure of the gender. It's always with me. Always. Never leaves me by myself. It's not annoying or frightening. It almost seems like it's protecting me. Every time I start to get involved in something I probably shouldn't, I feel a tug at my sleeve or a hand on my shoulder. Every time I tick someone off and I'm at risk of starting a fight, I feel something pressed up against me like it's shielding me or telling me to back down. It's never done anything to harm anyone, but it has scared people off before. A few bad people I used to hang out with were scared off when they came to my house and said they saw a man who looked like a slave with an axe standing in the field and disappearing when they blinked. And there was another occasion when someone said there was a man dressed as a Native American stalking them in my yard. To this day, I still don't know if there are other spirits on my property or if those men were illusions created by the spirit following me. Whatever the case, it's kept me away from the wrong crowd of people, and I thank them for it. 
It's impossible to explain what it's like to have this spirit with me all the time, or to have it at all. Some of you may not believe any of this, and that's fine. But I can honestly tell you all, spirits do exist. Could hauntings be passed down from parents to their children? This woman thinks so. She has a haunting in the family. I've had many encounters with ghosts since I was a small child. My parents joke that they follow me wherever I go. I can't help but wonder if that may be true. Since there are so many, I will tell the most significant. The first time I ever saw a ghost, I was about six or seven years old. There used to be a man, dressed all in black, wearing a long black coat and a black hat kind of pulled down so I couldn't see his face, and he used to stand at the end of my bed or beside my bed. Naturally, this terrified me as a child, and I was afraid to go to sleep in my bed. In the same house, I could see the bathroom from my bed in my room. I watched one night the door to the bathroom was closed and I saw the shadow of a small child slip right in the crack of the door and disappear. I can't help but wonder if this is the same child who used to draw smiley faces on the wall inside the closet in my room. Fast forward a few years, a new house. I would often wake up at night to find a girl floating above my bed. She looked beaten. She had long, dark hair and was wearing a long, old-fashioned nightgown. The radio would turn on in the basement by itself and strange noises would happen. Now, I'm not the only one who saw this girl. My mom watched the shadow of her cross the living room and disappear once she hit the light in the dining room. Also, my best friend saw her sitting on the edge of the bathtub in our bathroom. I eventually became so scared to sleep at night that I slept with the lights on and eventually switched rooms. Once I switched rooms, I never saw her in my room again. I could just feel her once in a while around the house. Fast forward a few more years. I now have a child of my own, approximately three years old. We moved into a house where we found out later a man had died of a heart attack. I can always feel something watching me, especially in the master bedroom. Pictures fall off the walls by themselves and doors shut for no reason. One afternoon, I'm upstairs cleaning and my son is playing in the basement. I hear the door slam in the basement and my son crying. I run downstairs to find him cowered in the corner in the dark, crying. He says he was going to the bathroom when the door slammed and the lights went out and a black man came through the wall. He only played down there once after that and I found him hiding under the stairs, afraid to come out. Same house. We're sitting in the living room at night watching movies. My son turns to me and says, Mom, who's that in the kitchen? I look and see nothing. We moved shortly after that. Today, we live in a house where there's footsteps walking around upstairs and knocking on the closet doors. My husband has woken up to someone clicking their tongue at the side of the bed. I've walked in on my four-year-old talking to the closet door and saying that he's talking to his friend. I turn to walk out of the room and someone has very distinctly knocked on the closet door from the inside. So are ghosts attracted to me, and is this something I've passed on to my children? Or have I had the same ghosts following me house to house, if that's even possible? We're almost to the end of these lifelong hauntings, but I do have a couple more to share with you when Weird Darkness returns. If you or someone you know is struggling with depression, dark thoughts, or addiction, please visit the Hope in the Darkness page at WeirdDarkness.com. There, I've gathered numerous resources to find hope and solutions for those suffering from thoughts of suicide or self-harm, 
There is the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, as well as the Crisis Text Line. Both have trained counselors at all hours to help those in need, and the page even includes text numbers for those in the U.S., Canada, United Kingdom, and Ireland. Those struggling with depression can get help through the Seven Cups website and app, and there's information for anyone to read more about what depression truly is and how to identify it through our friends at ifred.org. There are resources for those who battle addictions, be it drugs, alcohol, or self-destructive behavior, along with help for those related to addicts. The page has links to help you find a therapist or counselor, to find help for those who have a family member with Alzheimer's or dementia, help for those in a crisis pregnancy, and more. These resources are always there when you or someone you love needs them on the Hope in the Darkness page at WeirdDarkness.com. This self-described simple man from Florida has been dealing with something for over 20 years and doesn't show any signs of stopping. He's been dealing with two decades of knocking. I've been sharing my story for years and never thought about posting it for others to read. Last night, I had something unusual happen in addition to what's been happening over the course of about 20 years, so I decided to share with a friend at work who has not been a part of my stories in the past. He suggested I look up this website and post, so here I am. About 20 years ago, while home with my two-year-old son, I had what I believed to be my first encounter. My son had walked into the kitchen where I was, and while I took 30 seconds to walk into the living room, upon my return, he was standing on the counter. There were no chairs around the corner, and all the cabinets were locked with a child safety device. He could not tell me how he arrived to where he was standing, and I was so concerned with his safety, I did not even think about how he actually climbed up there. After a few minutes of shock, I began to think about how this could have happened and came up with nothing. Over the course of the next few years, I realized I was not alone, even when I was by myself. My wife and I do not sleep together because we both snore. Over the next six years, while living in Kissimmee, Florida, I slept on the couch and she took the bedroom. During this time, while sleeping on the couch, on numerous occasions, I was awoken by the sound of three knocks on what appeared to be a window or door. I cannot remember whether I opened a door or not on any occasion, but I do know that it was a very real and convincing knock that was always in rhythm and always only three knocks. A few times it had happened on consecutive nights, but nothing consistent. We then built a home in St. Cloud, Florida. The knocks did not stop, but I did have one of the most strangest things happen to me that I still cannot figure out. I woke up one morning while sleeping by myself in my bedroom and found a very deep cat-like scratch on the inner part of my thigh. Problem number one is that my bedroom door was locked and Problem number two is that I do not own a cat. I tried to reenact the scratch by using my own fingernails and failed to do so. The way I sleep would make it impossible for me to scratch myself like that, and even if I could, I tried to scratch myself to match the scratch. I woke up and could not even come close. The scratch that was left on my thigh was there for about nine months. I showed a few friends, but in hindsight, I should have taken a few pictures. It was unreal. After a few years, I relocated with my job to Louisville, Kentucky, which is where I reside now. Once again, the knocks came with me, and the latest occurred about two months ago, but last night I had something happen that trumps all of the above. While standing in my bathroom door in my bedroom last night and watching a Little League baseball game on ESPN, I witnessed my work desk I have in my bedroom lift up about one inch and then drop back down to the floor. This happened two feet in front of me. I did not get scared or jump up and down, but instead stood there in disbelief. I then went to understand what could have caused this, other than what's been historically following me around for the last 20 years. 
My chair was not close to the desk. The desk was not up against the wall, just in case anything hit the house hard enough to move the desk. I was reaching for something with that one. I then thought I did not see what I thought until I looked at the water bottle I had on my desk, and it was still moving. These are things I cannot explain. I'm a very simple man who's been married for 26 years and have a great family. One son is a police officer, another just graduated college, and my youngest is 13 and a very smart young man. I have a great job, and I've been employed with them for the last 19 years in a prominent leadership position. I'm not crazy, and I go to church as much as possible and consider myself an educated man, but I cannot figure this out. Our last story comes from a woman named Linda, whose haunted life began with a Ouija board at a New Year's Eve party. Since I was a small child, all kinds of strange things seemed to have happened in my life. As a small child, I was playing in my room in the evening. When I looked at my bedroom window, I screamed for my mom. What I saw there was a face like the ones you see today of aliens. It had huge eyes. I remember those eyes giving me nightmares for many years. When mom came to my room, she looked out the window and saw nothing. At that time, we lived in Kadoka, South Dakota, close to the Badlands. At around age 15 or 16, my friend and I were babysitting on New Year's Eve. We lived in Sioux Falls. We knew it would be boring after the kids went to bed, so we took a Ouija board along. We asked it all kinds of questions and it would spell out answers. Kind of creepy, but you know how kids like that stuff. Anyway, the main thing I remember from that night is that I asked it how many kids I would have. It spelled out, one, dead one. I freaked, but asked more questions. I asked what it would be. It spelled out, girl. I also asked when she would be born, and it spelled out, November 9, 1969. Well, I had two kids. Remember, Ouija board said one dead one. Well, in 1969, I gave birth to a baby girl who passed away four hours after birth. She was born November 9, 1969. So, actually, it was right because it said one dead one. I remember that night after she passed away, I was on the third or fourth floor at McKinnon Hospital, and I had the eeriest feeling that someone was watching me. This was the spookiest experience of my life. I'll never forget it, nor will I forget the feeling that night after my baby Kathy passed away. When I was 39 years old and married, we bought a house built in the early 1900s in Willow Lake, South Dakota. At first, everything was fine then strange, unexplainable things started happening. Cold breezes would blow across your face. My husband said he always felt something touching his feet in bed, and one night he thought it was our little granddaughter, but he got up and she was sound asleep. He also said that when he got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom that the hallway was really cold. He always had the heat really high, and I hated that, but at night the hallway was cold. Well, he kept telling me how he felt something on his feet at night. I told him he was crazy because I was right next to him and I felt nothing. We changed sides in the bed one night, and I about freaked because I felt like fingers were moving on my feet. That freaked me out. One night I was in that same bedroom because I didn't want to watch what he was watching on TV. All of a sudden, my dog started acting really weird, and at the same time, I all of a sudden felt like a really cold hand on my hip. I ran to the living room into my husband's lap. He said I was white as a ghost and wanted to know what was wrong. That same bedroom. One night, my husband was away trucking, and all of a sudden, I awoke to my two dogs growling. When I opened my eyes, I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me because right in front of me, about the height of a person, I saw reddish-orange glowing eyes, kind of like deer eyes glow at night, but these were reddish-orange. I stared and closed my eyes, reopened my eyes, and it was still there. I wasn't scared because I thought it was my eyes. I turned my head and see it out of my side vision. 
Finally, I thought, the hell with this, turned the light on, nothing there, and the dogs quit growling. One thing I want to say is that this house had old windows, which were drafty, so I had totally covered the windows with insulation. Nothing could have shined in the windows. Same house. My two small grandchildren were staying with me. Colin was playing with cars in the middle of the living room and Brooke was in the kitchen. I was in my recliner about four feet from Colin. All of a sudden, Colin turns his head. Who did that? I said, did what, Colin? He said, somebody was tapping on my shoulder. I told him it was probably a bug flying around the house. Later, he was on the front porch playing and he came running into the living room and told me something was tapping his face. Creepy. That night, I put both kids upstairs in the same bed to sleep. They came running down the stairs white as a ghost. Grandma, there's a ghost right by the fan on the dresser. They'd never heard any of what went on in the house. I kept it quiet because they were small kids. I didn't know what to say. Anyway, I put Colin downstairs with Grandpa and took Brooke upstairs with me. That little girl would not let me turn the light off. She was scared to death. Now, usually little kids feel safe with an adult, but she would not lay down with the lights on and be there with her. We went downstairs. I had my computer room upstairs. One of my dogs always went upstairs with me. Every night around 10.30, Buddy would go into the hallway and start growling. There was nothing shining in the window, so I didn't know what he was growling at. The next night, I closed the computer room door and sure enough, 10.30, he started growling at the door. This kind of freaked me out. I wondered what the heck was going on in this house. I have a son, and he and his girlfriend, the grandchildren's parents, would not sleep upstairs. My son told me that his pillow was pulled from under his head. I have two adult stepchildren who would not sleep up there either. My sister and I were upstairs doing crafts one day. We had music playing. All of a sudden, the music stopped and the TV went on. We ran downstairs, screaming. Her husband told us it was nothing. But why would that happen? I stayed with my mother for four years, taking care of her at her home. She had ovarian cancer. I kept mom at home until the day she died. After she passed away, I would be in the basement bedroom. Maybe this was my imagination, I don't know. We had played Amazing Grace and other music for her when she was dying. After she passed away, I would hear music and sometimes footsteps upstairs. Made me have anxiety attacks really bad, so my brother came and moved me to his farm. I was up late one night at the farm, and I heard faint music, so I went downstairs since I thought Scott was awake. He had no music playing, but he told me that he and others had heard it before too. Well, this has got to be kind of long and not sure if I told the entire story, but most of it's written here. I've told people about things, especially about that house, and seems people don't believe me. Wish I could get a lie detector or hypnotized just to prove these things are true. Maybe hypnosis would even prove to myself what these unexplainable things were. People act like you're nuts. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me anytime with your questions or comments at darren at weirddarkness.com. Darren is D-A-R-R-E-N. Weirddarkness.com is also where you can find all of my social media, listen to free audiobooks I've narrated, visit the store for Weird Darkness t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, phone cases, and more merchandise, find other podcasts that I host, and more. WeirdDarkness.com is also where you can find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression or dark thoughts. Also on the website, if you have a true paranormal creepy tale to tell like these people, you can click on Tell Your Story. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. All stories on Weird Darkness are purported to be true unless stated otherwise, and you can find links to the stories or the authors in the show notes. Weird Darkness is a registered trademark. 
Copyright Weird Darkness. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. Psalm 121 verses 7 and 8. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. And a final thought. You're better off starting over than continuing something that no longer serves your betterment. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the weird darkness.